is going on, everybody? Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. I don't know what week it is, but I'm excited to be back in here with Jonathan Mack. J Mack, what's going on? What up? What up? You know that voice, the sweet, <laughs> sultry sound of Jonathan Mack on the, what do we call that? A soundboard? Uh, yeah. All right. We're going to, next level, we're going to have like the screen and the monitor switcher and yep. all that stuff. The switchboard, switch switchboard. all the cameras. Yeah. I just say that you're just like, I need the credit card for this. I'm like, all right, let's get it. Let's do it. Well, look, we got Jonathan Mack in here with me today. And then this is something that, oh man, I got such a good friend in the studio today. Um, I think we just decided as we were walking through the office, like 2004, maybe 2005, it was around then uh, when we connected yeah. uh, through through just silly friends, circumstances, uh, yeah. friends and did st- doing some work together. And, you know, gosh, there's a lot of path along the way. Um, but I got my buddy, Chris Moore, Pro Landscape here, and he is, he's just a beast, honest to God, one of the most genuine best human beings i've ever known in my life and we're just excited to have you in the studio today chris what's going on buddy it's it's going well just just don't make me cry today oh well i make no promises (laughs) this is a safe space and we can all cry and yeah we can hold hands we can do whatever we need to right jonathan yep we could all hang out (laughs) we got some time it's good so look i you know chris we've talked about getting you in here you know for a couple months i feel like we've been talking about it you've been a big supporter of the show since it launched like every week, I always get something encouraging from you yeah. and it would just really, really appreciate it. I mean, this was definitely something outside of my comfort zone when we started it. And, um, you know, with, with feedback from people that I respect and trust and care about like you, um, it, you know, some encouragement along the way and kind yeah, words. I, mean, I, I definitely helps. like supporting my friends and their businesses and yeah. their endeavors. And, you know, we've, we've had my dog at your training facility. Yeah. Had my dogs at your boarding facility. Yeah. You know, I'm here to support your podcast now. And it's awesome. You know, I love seeing you grow, man. I appreciate it. Thank and you. Like you said, been there since 2004. Yeah. It's been thick a lot's changed thick along and, the way. Thick and thin, <laughs> ups and downs. That is the truth. So. But the thing that's cool about that is, and we could probably do a whole freaking show just on our history. But the thing that's really dope about it is over the years, so we've had years where we're not as close and, and, and connected again and stuff like that. But the thing that, at least from my standpoint, if I ever saw your name popping up on my phone, I'm jumping on it. And I okay. feel like no matter how much time had passed, you know, you would do the, the same for me. And we always just kind of pick up where we left yeah. off. Right. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's really important to surround yourself with those, those circle of friends that you, you can depend on and rely on. And yeah. You know, and I, I've, I've always thought of you as, you know, definitely top five fave people I appreciate you know, in my circle. Um, so I appreciate everything you've done for me in the past. And awesome. Thank you. Look forward to the future. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Damn right. Yeah. So talk family a little bit, man, because I love I love your family. You know, don't be getting super emotional talking about the kids nah. and the wife and everything. But like just your, your family's awesome. And, and I, I want to start there because I think family is so important. And so, you know, share a little bit about that. And then I want to go back to where the landscaping thing started, because where you are at now with what you've built, yeah, you know, is so different than, gosh, when I first met you and what it was years before that. So let's talk family for a little bit and then kind of take us back to when the landscaping thing started. Yeah. So um, beautiful family. Got my wife, uh, two kids presently, Keats and Wilder. Wilder is a COVID baby. Okay. Uh, right at the beginning. Um, she's about nine months, going 10 months now. Yeah. And my wife's pregnant with our third. So we got two COVID babies. I guess there's just nothing better to do. I mean, I mean, COVID or not, I don't know if there's necessarily better things to do. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's awesome. But that's um, so good. Uh, you got to give her a break, bro. You gotta- <laughs> it, it, it's funny how. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll definitely need a break after this one. Um, kids have changed my life big time. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's one of the greatest things that's ever came about. Um, it really slowed down me as a person. Yeah. Um, I used to crush it, you know, when I was young, before I was married. Morning, sunrise, sunset, just going at it, you know, pretty much dreaming about the business. Yeah. And just since day one. Um, as soon as my first son came, I slowed down. I didn't want to miss a moment. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I really am happy that I've, I've taken that Avenue. Yeah, sure. And, and, and really grown my, you know, business as well as, um, my family and glad I was able to grow my business to a point that it can sustain itself right prior to kids. Yeah, for sure. So that grind has, you know, just been there. That's awesome. So, you know, that's a really cool point. Like when you talk about, you know, when your first son was born and it's slowing down, Yeah, you were like, and it doesn't mean business slowed down. It's just priorities, things that you always held as the highest priority in a moment mm -hmm. shift. Yeah. Nothing was the same. Nothing matters. Nothing. You're like at, at any moment, if Ashley called you and was like, Hey, this is what like it literally nothing else matters. Yeah. Absolutely. But you don't know that's a thing until it becomes a thing. Absolutely. <laughs> like you can't, you can try to tell people that you can try to explain it to them, but until that person in your life and you, and you think, and you're like, okay, it's my spouse. Right. And it is, she's very important. I know the, the, the love you have for your wife. Yeah. You know how I feel about my wife. Then these little babies come. Mm. And it will jack you up. It will jack you up. And it does. And the thing with slowing down is I, I think when Logan was born, I spent four, four or five weeks working from the house. Devin had it covered. My grandmother was in town. My mom's around, like her family's around. They didn't need me there. And I'm an office guy. I love being in the office. You know me. I just, I worked out. Of, we set up a whole office in the living room. I didn't want to leave. Yeah. Like, what are you going to miss? Then there's seasons where you are busy and, and things are going on, but at a second, all of it can be dropped. Yeah, especially when they're needed. Yes. There are times where I want to get away. For sure. <laughs> for, I'm like, I got, for sure. I, got, I got paperwork to do. <laughs> my, my man, in case y'all weren't doing the math, uh, um, uh, it, when, when baby number three gets here, we're at three under four. Three under four. Oh. Three under four. I have two under 17 right now, and I'm just like, okay. What so, is happening? so the neighbors right across the street from <laughs> us actually, um, they were kind of in the same situation where they're having their third. Found out it was twins. They had four under four. Oh, and I'm just like, literally makes my my heart race. But at, at what number does it just start becoming easier? Oh, buddy, I don't know that that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that happens. Um, what a fun stage, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I'm excited where we're at. That's <laughs> really cool. That. So when was the last time you saw Logan? Uh, probably was he on the course golfing with you? I think. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get to interact with him. I mean, but 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 I haven't seen him in between for years. Yeah, I mean the dude just jumped six feet. He's like six two now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And the thing that's so funny is, I in my mind, he's still like three years old, like running around, yeah. and he's six two driving around in our cars, and I'm like. It's crazy this how they get nuts. to that stage so quick. Yeah, and I'll tell you, man, once he started driving, yeah, it all changed. And you remember what it was like when you started driving. You All of a sudden, you're just gone. Yeah. Because you're like, I can go anywhere. I just want to be everywhere. Yeah. And so the dude's just gone. I'm, and he's living the dream. He's I'm like, what's up? He's like, well, I don't have practice on Friday. I said, like, so what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm going to go to the club and play golf. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what are you doing Monday through Thursday? He's like, I got practice, so I play golf <laughs> Monday through Thursday what after life. school. What a life. Yeah. I'm like, Logan, you want to go do this? Oh, I can't. I go and play golf with my buddies. I mean, he loves it. And I'm so excited that he loves it and has found that. But once he could drive, he didn't need rides anywhere. Dude's just, it's great. He's living, he's living the dream as he should. Absolutely. He does his school stuff. He handles his business. He works here. I mean, he does everything he's supposed to do. But um, he's still like a three-year-old to me. And oftentimes he acts like he's a freaking three-year-old. So you got the little ones. Yep. You got the wife. You got the house. Yep. You got your hobbies, which are work and golf. Let's be honest. Uh, not so much golf anymore. No. Just, just work. I mean, yeah. Let I me, mean, it's tough to get out as much as. I live a mile from the club. Yeah. You know, it used to be great when my oldest was the young. I mean, when he was like one going yeah. down at 7 p.m. Right. and the light was still out. I was yeah. like, I'm going to go chip and putt. And no chance anymore. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I play once a year. Yeah. Maybe. Holy moly. And I'm a mile from my club. Yeah, that's a tough one. Logan, we went out and played maybe a week ago. A week ago, we went out on a Sunday. Kiki was in quarantine, so we took, you know, the, the weekend off from church and 
we went out and he's like, do you want to play? I was like, oh man, I, pr-. I was like, yes, we'll go mm-hmm. play. And I probably play two, three times a year. Yeah. You know, he's playing five days a week, you know, doing the deal. And he'll sit there and he just, he'll whip me. If he dials in, he will whip me. And I'm not great by any means. I don't play enough to be great. And that game more than anything, you have to play oh, yeah. to be good. Yeah. And, um, you know, but yeah, we get out there a couple of times, but he's out there all the dang time. Yeah. I mean, that's his, that's I think, his deal. I think in another year or so it'll change and, uh, you know, he'll be able to come along and maybe enjoy the sport himself. Yeah. That's cool. That's fun. And being so close, I mean, you guys are in a great neighborhood, yeah. you got access to the place. And so it's fun. So talk to me a little bit about the business itself, because the business pro landscape of 2021 is not the business you had when you first started out and no. it shouldn't be, but talk about kind of that progression and, and what it looked like over the years. How yeah. did you start out? How did you end up yeah, in the so, field? So this, this, this will be good to get out there because everybody always has questions about this and how, you know, the company has come about like, like I just purchased it or something and right. just fell into it. Um, when I was probably, when my dad retired from the military, he was looking for something else to do. Yeah. So I needed to make some extra money with um, some boy scout summer camp that I was going to go to and we started asking neighbors, cut some grass, just like every other kid. And, um, we were just so busy and we ended up not even going to, going to summer camp. Um, just kept working, (laughs) I guess. Um, we were in a car and this is high school. Yeah. My dad was, had a car trunk open, push lawnmower hanging out the back of the trunk, (laughs) rear windows down, weed eater, all electric, hanging, hanging out. out, extension cords. And he did that for a little bit, maybe a year, bought a truck, bought a yeah. trailer, and progressed. I ended up, you know, finishing what I was doing, still going to school. And he he just kind of flowed with it. Yeah. You know, became a kind of a one crew, 30, 40 properties, cutting yeah. grass. And then the housing boom came. And he changed and went into another business with new construction. Yep. Um, instead of letting, you know, the business kind of, go the, the the mowing i was like i'll do it throughout college i'll make some side money you know so i i, I put all my classes for three days yep i just cr- bunched them up i was going to odu um got done with those and then i had the extra days to, to run the business right um graduated from odu with criminal justice degree thinking i'm going to go fbi something like that cool yep wasted my degree because i just kept cruising with the business right um, making good money. And, um, in 2003, we got our first business license. And ever since then, the business has always changed and progressed. Yeah. Whether I'm a, I'm a, I get bored of things. Mm -hmm. So I just need to add, add services or I get annoyed by things. Like one of the biggest things is I pull up to a streetlight when I was cutting grass and there is another company on every single light. Right. Across left, right. I'm like, I got to set myself apart. I yeah. got to do something. Um, sold an irrigation system. Uh, went and bought $50,000 machine as I sold that irrigation system. Yeah. And that machine never stopped moving. That's right. Got into all types of different stuff. We progressed from there. And, you know, we're doing full landscaping, decks, patios, um, fences, sod drainage i mean you, you name it We're, what i like to you say is if, if you need landscaping done um anything outside just give us a call and we can help you with it or i will i will definitely put you on to somebody um that i know yeah and, and we also do uh, artificial turf i don't know if you know that oh no i mean i i knew of it i had heard oh okay you know maybe what what did we put down like oh my god twenty thousand square feet of turf probably i don't know <laughs> But look, you but you didn't do turf until I asked. Yeah, I did like can, a, I did a we small turf, little right? residential dog area one sure. time. Yeah. And you said, Hey Chris, you think you can do this? I said, I could definitely do it. Yeah. I got the equipment. You did the research though. Yeah. You started looking into how to and this is the one thing like I've always respected about you and loved about you. It's like if there is a client who makes a request and it's like just lost you. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching on video, my what are you six go to, four? Go, go to YouTube. Yeah, and go to YouTube and watch height. this. <laughs> <laughs> Chris's chair. If you're listening right now, just he dropped down like 
a foot and a half down to the ground in the chair. That's amazing. Did you do that or did it make you? Did it do that to you? <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the? I was about to say, we got all new chairs. I just know for what that happened. happened. What happened? We this chair needed a little it. laugh. We needed to lighten it up in here a little bit. Let's oh my a little God. Sense, you know? Chris killed me. So, you know, he, he's always been the guy who will like, who will learn. He's not scared to learn anything. And he, he wants to get better and grow. And so I remember when you started doing like the, um, that you start getting like the landscape design and doing the lighting and like mm-hmm. doing the whole design, mm-hmm. you know, offerings for people. And, you know, when it was irrigation, it wasn't like, I'm going to try to do irrigation. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to invest in myself and the business, get the equipment I need to, to make this work. And it's like, I sold a irrigation job and I bought a $50,000 piece of equipment. Yeah. People are like, yo, you could have just gone and rented this for a hundred bucks a day. And people are so nervous about taking that next step and taking that leap. 100%. And, 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 and as, as you know, like, I mean, if you don't try, you can't succeed. Right. And, you know, I had a friend the other day calling me question if he should buy a dump trailer. And I'm like, Dude, that's the best purchase I ever made. Yeah. Like you, you, you gotta, you gotta see the logistics behind it and the, the, the finance, like he's, he's loading trailers with dirt. Yep. Driving with a laborer over to somewhere and offloading it with a shovel by hand. Right. I mean, you're going to pay for itself by (laughs) one way or another. You're going to pay the money. Yeah. And and they're just, I mean, it's just crazy. I've thought about buying a damn dump trailer and just renting it out. Yeah. I mean, because people are always looking for stuff like that. And people would much rather pay 50 bucks, grab the trailer, go get the mulch they need, dump it in their driveway rather than get the bed of their truck done. They can only get an eighth of what they need. So they're making all these trips. I was like, we don't have a market. I could put this little website. You know, people can sit right here. People yeah. come and grab it. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, what's your payment a month going to be? If you financed it and right. say you say you don't have cash to right. pay that, you're you're looking at 100, 150 bucks a month. I mean, yeah. You get three rentals out of it for 50 bucks, which is probably low. Probably super low, yeah. right? I mean, and or like what would I might use it for? You know, whereas it's more convenient for yeah. me and the time cost average and all this stuff. So it's just, it's funny, but you're right that why don't you think people. Why do you think people don't think that way? Why do you think they they're, they're afraid avoid to avoid that? Just fear? Yeah, I mean they're afraid to spend the money. That, yep. that commitment of that, I don't know that loan. I guess I don't know. I've just ne- I've never been fearful of that. Yeah. So to that point of Chris not being fearful to that. So back years ago, um, <laughs> um, Chris was honestly a godsend to me and in my family when we. You guys have heard me reference uh, on previous episodes, you know, when real estate crashed and, you know, we, we lost everything. I mean, bankrupt, we were just, we lost everything and it was a bad time and stuff came out really quick and I didn't know what I was going to do and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I was really trying to figure it out. And Chris was like, man, if you need to work, I can, you can work. And I, I was like, man, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. I don't, I'd been in an office. I'd been slinging mortgages for years. And Chris is like, dude, I can teach you, you'll work, you're a hard worker. And I was like, I'm going to come do sod. I'm going to, I'll do whatever, yeah. you know? And so he's like, okay. So we get like a week into me laying sod and, and helping with irrigation and doing these different things. And, you know, we both kind of came to the realization, maybe I could sell for you a little bit. Maybe I can go out and try to get you a mm-hmm. contract or two or something. And, you know, Chris's uh, willingness to uh, spend the money or, or figure it out. I ended up getting a job at a local airport <laughs> and it was significant and it was a fortune and we didn't really know how we were going to get the sod, uh, it out. but Chris figured it out and we got a local dealer to, to work with us on terms. And because it was like a municipal contract type deal, payment on it wasn't really in our favor, but it was a big project. It was a lot of grass and we figured out how to do it, but it was a lot of risk yeah. in getting it done. Yep. Um, but it was also a big opportunity. And, you know, it, it that, that was, that says a lot about you as, that was as a person and you, you hit it right there. Like you, you came into a business that you don't know nothing about and you went and sold some contracts, even maintenance contracts. And I'm like, dude, you're not going to get that number. Right. You're not going to get that number. And, and you did. Yeah. You're just that people person. But but with that being said, you actually made me relook at my numbers. And that number was actually right. Yeah. In the long run. 
you know, maybe I was underbidding prior. Sure. But bringing that fresh perspective into the business really opened my eyes to just bidding. Yeah. You know, jobs. I mean, the side job was the largest job that we've had to date from from then. That thing was crazy. I don't ever want to do something like that again. <laughs> that was the worst. I mean, remember that sunrise? Was the worst. I, I have pic- I have pictures of like the sun coming up and these trailers, like three trailers of sod rolling in, and I'm just like, this is like day three. Right. And I'm like, my back is you're on that bobcat. We're just here. rolling yeah. that thing <laughs> down the deal. Jonathan, if you so sod when there's when there's huge amounts of sod, right? And it's it's let's say it's long, you know, it's street off to worry about a lot of cuts and stuff. What they do is they come in what five foot wide rolls, four foot yeah, maybe, four foot maybe, you know, and then what fifty feet, yeah, something, something like that. that. I haven't done yeah. it. I haven't done it since because oh, I hated it. It but, was crazy. Yeah, it was so like monotonous. Roll, roll them out, right? Yeah, it's almost down. just you roll it out and you tack that. Well, you would hope they would tack them down, right, Chris? That was that was a, <laughs> that was a cuss word uh, job. <laughs> so, but it's just these huge. It looks like huge rolls of hay, like bales mm-hmm. of hay, and you come up with the skid steer, the bobcat. It grips them up on the side, mm-hmm. and you just you back up. Yeah, because you don't it, want to run it over. Right, so you had to back up, and you're just rolling this thing down. So he's watching the mirrors, trying to stay straight, mm-hmm. and we're prepping the next roll to offload. But you got to get them off the trucks first, and then the trucks are going and bringing more. So how long are we out there? A week? Yeah, a little less probably. Yeah, because they they had a deadline. Right. Remember, it rained and it was like insane. it was muddy, and we were trying to they were trying to grade it in front of us, and and like, what we were just, doing, was, we were putting sod down along runways at an airport all right so every time i fly in and out of a certain airport i'm like we did that grass yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah all yeah, those yeah. weeds now you know and all this stuff because of course they take care of it really well but right. i remember the following year um they called us back actually i don't know if you know this story but um air force one practice lands here and um big old 747 <laughs> and it actually, the next year, the engineers were like, yeah, we'll put Bermuda sod down in like October or something. And I'm like, it's not going to root. Right. Oh, we'll just tack it down with sod staples mm-hmm. so far out. Well, next spring, it's still not really rooted correctly. Air Force One with those big old thrusting engines <laughs> lands and takes off and literally blows all the sod. Like like, like a two page. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> but these are yeah. like thousands of pounds of turf. Just like, blowing like paper towels in the wind. And they look at me like, hey, you going to come fix this? I'm like, <laughs> for a price, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll come fix it. We can this. do anything. Yeah. yeah, I definitely respect the hustle because I've tried a few landscaping jobs in my day. Was not built for it. <laughs> oh, I surely was. I've never felt back pain like I felt unloading sod out of the back of a trailer. Um, if, I, if I ever told nuts. you the story of my most recent landscaping job, no, I got out there. I was laying garden beds, like laying mulch down, yeah. and it was it was like ninety eight, ninety nine degrees. I, you know how humid it gets here. I was just not a fan. I called my homie up. I was like, hey. Come and pick me up from this job. I'm out. I'm out here in the middle. This guy of, left you hanging. Yeah. I'm out here in the middle of Coventry. I need you to come and pick me up. I'll I'll talk to my boss. I'll get it figured out. But I need you to drop me off in my car. I'm not doing this. I mean, I, I honestly, over this last year, would have been happy if I would have just got him to come to work and for work half for a day. an hour. Oh, yeah. oh no, I got everything laid down. But it was the process of like being there for another hour, an hour and a half, making sure we finished things yeah. up. I was like, nope, you yeah. can keep the money too. You don't even need to pay me. I just need to get out of the heat. I like those workers. I, 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 I've had guys like not even, you know, I, I text them like the morning of like, Hey man, you, you on the way to work? I don't say, Hey man, you right, know, I'm sure. a little more professional about that. Um, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You just don't show up. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You know, this last year has been just nuts, but that's the type of dude though, that Chris is like 2009, I think it was summer of 2009 that I ran with you and you know, those months and you let me, you know, just contribute where I could add value. And that was a huge, you know, that was a pivotal point for me and my family um, when a lot of relationships had disappeared and you were just right there with us, man. And I, I, I'm glad to, to hear that from your standpoint, you felt like we added some value because that was legit. I knew nothing about that stuff. You know, I yeah. just, I just saw it from a different perspective when I was looking at kind of like, all right, the jobs and the the projects that you were doing and stuff. I was like, man, you know, revenue wise, if we could lock down a couple of apartment complexes, if we could lock down stuff like this time wise return, you know, different things. And just, it, it's like you said, kind of that fresh perspective of looking right. And as you've yeah. grown over the years, you know, and you've taken on different types of projects and specialties, 
I mean, that's, that's kind of the same thing because you, you, someone asks for a work and you're like, hey, let me take a look at it. Let me see what I can, I can do for that. Now you're like, huh, this is something we could do. This fits our strategy. Yeah. This is a great return. Mm-hmm. This is a, if we spent our weeks doing this instead of this other thing, this would be a better use of time, return, growth of the business, steadiness of work. Maybe it's something more that you enjoy, but you don't really know about these things. If you're unwilling to sacrifice short term, what you're comfortable and used to doing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that I think is big and you started to lead into the, the staffing piece. Um, you and I were talking before the show started about how the last 18 months, home improvements, renovations, landscaping, uh, pools, you know, all these things. People have, I, I have to believe this has been like the greatest 18 months for that, those industries in the history of mankind. Like it just seems bigger than ever, busier than ever, because people weren't able to go anywhere. And once everybody realized, hey, we're not all going to go broke, they started spending money. Yep. You know, so they start spending money. They start blowing your phone up. You're busy as can be. You're in an industry that's super labor intensive and nobody's working. Yeah. But yet you're still figuring out how to get it done and execute. So kind of talk us through the last 18 months, because I think so many people can relate to the story you're about to tell and things that you're about to talk about because everybody's been through it, but your industry and you're still winning. Yeah. Has been hit probably harder than most. Yeah. So, um, I can't do it without my guys. I mean, my guys are workhorses. I have a solid crew that has been with me since the beginning. Yeah. It was just the fact that we couldn't find more people to add to our crew. Yeah. So luckily the people that I had employed prior were just for me, for the company, solid, yeah. solid the entire time. Um, yeah, I, I I remember the first day that like they kind of put the mandates on um it was pretty much indoor facilities and things like that you know and we're landscapers and we really didn't even know if we we were allowed to go outside right we're kind of in close quarters we're close to each other and we're doing work and things like that within 10 feet of each other whatever it was and um i'm looking around feeling all weird that i'm out in this situation and you know am i allowed right um but, you know, as time went by, um, the calls were still coming in and all of a sudden they just started compounding. Like, seriously, like we can't even pick up our phones or call people back because there are that many calls coming in, job requests from the website. And I don't I don't do advertising. Right. So it's just one going into this whole thing with a solid business. Um, and, the, and then two, just the, the the people that are searching and the, the new demand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, jobs became a lot more intensive, more, you know, complex, um, a lot more outdoor patios, yep. things like that. Um, and, and I think that's exactly, they're just sitting at home and, and, and looking at their backyard and realizing that I need stuff done and I'm just tired of looking at it. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then now, now I got my dad working for me. He's been working for me for the past 10 or 12 years. And, and like that old saying so, says, you know, he can, he can sell, um, ice to an Eskimo. Yeah. He's just one of the most kind hearted gentle guys. Yep. Um, does a hell of a job for the business and, um, I couldn't, you know, do it without him and the guys. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, as you start getting into this more specialty projects, yeah. you know, I've seen some of the, the, the paver work that you guys have done. Um, I've seen these you see that deck patio, yeah, did? the the decks, we the treks, this, and whatever. Yeah, that yeah. composite deck, insane. They had trees coming up through the middle of it. The angles were, yeah, a nightmare. It looked like from my standpoint, it was beautiful, but from an execution standpoint, it was crazy. I mean, I could a job. I mean, that deck was how many square feet was that deck? Right. Thousands. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was. I don't, I don't even remember. There's multiple exactly. levels. There's two levels. We ended up. Did doing it go down to little, water in the back? Like, yeah, so. and we ended up doing this little dock, this little floating dock down there, and then we did a bunch of pavers for them. But we used like this Trex composite. We used two different colors. We had an accent border, 
cable railing system, but the, it was incredible. It's a type of deck that anybody would yeah. like. It, it what, should. What kind of deck is this? <clears throat> it doesn't rot. It doesn't like. Well, I encourage everybody to go to my Facebook page. That's right. Pro Landscapes oh. by Chris Moore. Oh yeah, toss us some. Fo- <laughs> toss us some. Toss us some photos. I'll throw them up in yeah, the. Yeah, we'll promo. put them up in the show. But we're um, talking about it. Yeah, it, 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 it's just been a. It was a fun project. And, yeah. And that was setting myself, you know, to the next level. I've, have yeah. I have I done decks before? Yeah. Have I done shreks at 45 degree angles with outlines and I mean yeah. this thing cable railing system no but I, I I figured it out and I mean I, I don't think a builder of a deck would walk in and say I did a bad job at all right how long did that project take because that was winter too wasn't it yeah so, I mean between that and him being a little more uh lenient on uh having to be there because he right. had a second house yeah um it probably took me two or three months yeah but it was a so we started with just a resurface right so we took the old deck boards off he's just like let's put treks on and it just progressed from there and it's he's the ideal client that you really want like as the project goes things change yep um we ended up tearing it down all the way to the very very bottom right like the found we even replaced some stuff on his house like we just redid oh, wow. the entire deck it went from a resurface to an entire deck. Well, kind of like when you're remodeling a house too. Once you start taking those yeah, walls down, you and you're like, "Oh, this there's some moisture. There's some this and that. There's rot. There's yeah. this isn't going to work based on what you want this to end up being." And when you're looking at a project that um, intense, you know, wh- what are you going to do? You you're not going to replace that well, beam that, and that the, support, that's the, right? That's and doing the, all this other stuff. That's the thing. When I take the deck boards off and there's rotted boards up underneath. I'm going to go to the client and say, you know, I'm not trying to upsell you. Here's the situation. Right. I will gladly replace them. And I think you should. This is my property. Yeah. I would replace them. But, you know, that's ultimately up to you. Yeah, for sure. And it just leads to more work. So with that, like that specialty work. So, you know, you're doing the the decking, you're doing the pavers. you're, You're now an expert in turf and synthetic turf. And what you found when you started researching it, you called me up. You're like, Josh, I can totally do this. This is like doing pavers. Yeah. We're just going to roll this carpet out over the top of it instead of having to lay each stone, yeah. you know, independently. And so that was great. But in the beginning, we really didn't know how it was mm-hmm. going to work. And I tell you what, man, that stuff holds up great. Sure. Are there some areas that the dogs want to mess with and whatever? Uh-huh. They're dogs. That's, they're dogs. They're going to do that. But that turf is incredible. I, my next house turf like it's i'm always just gonna go oh well, well, i even said right after we put it down i mean not only did it help you know with the dogs running on everything and not getting pebbles in their yeah. feet but i mean your instagram photos went from 100 percent a two to three like they're great photos sure. of the dogs but i mean then all of a sudden you have this beautiful grass the backdrop's always perfection yeah yeah 100 as, as, as the guy that takes the photos that's Thank right. You. <laughs> so, so you should be appreciative of that. Yeah, oh yeah, one hundred percent. But it looks true. a lot better. It's 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 the backdrop and yeah, like and the color. You know, yeah. the color just pops Boom. and it's so fun. Um, and it's better for the dogs. But that wasn't a cheap thing to do. Get in the turf, paying for the install. Like I mean, it cost. But that was the better. That was the better deal. Yeah, you know, and absolutely. so that's what we needed to do. But as you're learning these things, is your primary crew learning these things along the way with you? Absolutely. Or, okay. So when, as you're growing and adding to the team, you know, your, your foundation, your crew, your base crew, they're the type of guys who want to get better. They want to be challenged. They want to learn more. The disconnect with growth has been with more of those support roles yes. more entry level roles and stuff. Yeah. So, so ideally you want to hire somebody that knows exactly 100% what to do from the get go. Like I would love to hire somebody that's smarter than me in installing pavers or intricate designs on decks and things like that. But it's not easy to find in this industry. And I think this is where it makes it very difficult is the fact that the, um, the, the, the guys that you really have to train, you have to train the people that are on your crew right now. Right. To, to, to grow with the company. Because you can't just find those guys. Those guys that have that experience are out there trying to start their own business. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, right. you know, you almost can, you can almost train a guy to a certain level. And then all of a sudden that um, guy 
decides to go start his own business. I'm yep. sure it's like that in a lot of different 100%. situations, but I think it's compounded in the landscaping industry because yeah. I mean, especially like grass cutting. I mean, you see how many grass cutters are out there, especially when the economy tanked back in, you know, 08, 07, yep. it's like all of a sudden everybody has a mower. That's well, funny. right. But you, you made the comment a little, a little while ago about, Hey, you pull up to the light and you're like, the left of you, the right of you, across from you, it's just trucks and trailers yeah. and logos. Like, how do we, how do we differentiate ourselves? Because from a consumer standpoint, I just need somebody to cut my lawn. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's uh, unless there's something special that you're, you're, you're looking into and 90% of the landscape companies start and finish at cutting lawn. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Then you've got, at least from my perspective, you've got this, this 10% number that get into lighting, that get into irrigation, that get into sod, that get into more intensive things like the, the, the paver work and stuff and design. Mm -hmm. Like that's a much smaller group. But if everybody's just sitting there at the light and you're sitting there at the light as a consumer and you're just seeing these trucks and trailers, you don't know that of who does the the specialty stuff and, and who doesn't. Cause you're still mowing lawns. You still have crews cutting and doing maintenance, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you've got your crew that's out doing the specialty stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, the guys that are more skilled that know they add a lot of value, if they're not feeling used in a good way and fulfillment, yeah, they're going to try to bounce and, and do the deal. Or they feel like they can do these things mm -hmm. and they don't think about the difficulties of running a business, getting the jobs, hiring staff and all. So it's like, well, they don't, they don't like the way you correct them that day. Yeah. And so they're like, see, I'm going to do it. And next thing you know, tomorrow they've got a truck with a sticker on the side of it because it's that easy to do. Or they jump to another landscape, another landscaper, whatever it may be, because there's plenty out there and everybody's looking for people right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like landscapers are always looking for people regardless. Um, but like in our industry, it's the same thing. You train them up, yep. you teach them, you know, and it's like, well, I'm just going to do this on my own. Okay. Okay. Good luck. I, I wish you the best, but they don't understand what it takes mm -hmm. for there to be opportunities to earn day in and day out. Like your guys want to work. They're working because you've got work for them. Yeah. You have jobs in place that didn't just happen. Like you, you didn't just wake up today and have a successful business. You've been working on this thing for how long? Since oh, high three. school? Oh, yeah. I mean, high school, but yeah, oh, 03 practically. So 18 years. Yeah. You know, just overnight success. Yeah. That we have steady work every day and my trucks to drive, <laughs> you know, my equipment to use. Yeah. And, 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 and I appreciate the guys that are, have been sticking with me, you know, the longest and, and the more they learn, the more they can grow and the more they can make, you know, and, you know, for sure. it, it takes a special person to understand that. Yep. and understand that there is a business side of things. So I try to explain that yeah. clearly to my guys and 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 just go from there. And But know. not everybody that's going to click for, right? No. And like you could have the most skilled employee mm -hmm. who's just tremendous. They add a ton of value and they know how to work every piece of equipment. They know how to, to, to cut, <laughs> to, to design. Yeah. They can do everything. They'll never understand the business side and they don't need to, but they need to understand that they're valued by you and that you appreciate them showing up every day and that they execute at a high level. And that's why they stay with you, yeah. you know? And so they can understand those things, but it, sometimes like, I don't care about the business piece. Like I just want to get out here and run this equipment. That's what they love. And that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I so when I hire people, I always ask them, I say, okay, so we have a wide range of things you can do. Right. Okay. You have a little experience, but I can teach you anything you want to do. Yep. So here are the different aspects of my company. We yep. got grass cutting, monotonous, day after day, same thing. If that's you, cool. Let me put you on that crew. If you just want to come to work, punch the clock, yep. do what needs to be done, same thing every week. Then I got other skilled labor that I need to get people on board with. You know, if you want to do pavers, I'll teach you how to do pavers. Yep. You know, and 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 you'll make more money doing that, but it's gonna always be changing, but it it's hard. Yep. I mean, in the middle of summer. We had that heat blast a couple of weeks ago. Yep. And I mean, my guys hung in there and I mean, it was, it felt like 110 degrees outside and we're out there laying pavers in the full sun. Right. And just drenched and, you know, they stuck with it. And, um, 
you know, that's, 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 that's where the opportunity is for, for individuals to come aboard and grow. And, and I, you know, I, I have goals well beyond right now in my head that, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to in the, in the future is yeah. breaking it up into separate companies and I need people to run those separate companies yeah. and I want to hire within because they know the system and the way things go already. So that's the opportunity that somebody could have yep. is to literally run the company, a section of the company. Yeah. Division, you know, and, and, and I mean, I'm still looking for those type of people now, yeah. you know, I, I, we, we need people that vibe. You know, I hate, I hate, I hate drama for sure. You know, that's the number one thing. Don't, don't bring drama to work. <laughs> yeah. Leave it I mean, in the car. Like, yeah. I'm like, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's like, I leave my, my situations yep. away from here, you know, handle it when you're at home or whatever. Right. And that's tough too, because guys, particularly like in your work, I mean, they're spending a lot long days together. There there's physical labor. They're sweating together. They're bleeding together. You know, they're spending more time together than they are with, you know, family, friends, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. And so it, it, inevitably they're going to get close. So what do you do with people you're close with? You talk, whatever, but so easily that day can just go from a mood standpoint to just dropping because one dude starts bitching about something. Then the next one kind of piles in on yeah. it and you're sitting there like, guys, can we let, just, let's just work. Let's, let's just, just get, get this, this done. done. <laughs> like right. we, we can get out of here. Like, let's just knock it out. Let's execute at the level we need to. And that's tough because you're, you're on the job. Your mind is thinking about 8,000 different things. And it's not dismissing their frustrations or concerns, but the noise of it, right? There's enough yeah. noise in our heads as business owners and operators. Yeah. Like you just kind of want to take the machine and swing the bucket and wipe everybody <laughs> out, <laughs> you know, and you love them, but you oh. just have those days, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody has those days and, you know, and we can, we can deal with it to a degree. Sure. You know, and I, I try to, I try to help people out. Um, giving them my advice in the situations and yeah. such, but you know, you got to execute. Can't always be therapy. Absolutely. And therapy is important. So well, I have, I have a quick question. Yeah. So did I hear you say that you don't run ads on your business? We do not. You do not. Okay. So that's really interesting. Cause um, I'm not sure if you've heard, but the last ep episode that we did with the guest yeah. was Scott. Mm -hmm. He's the marketing guy, real yep. big on ads and SEO. So I find it cool that, um, opposition between ads and not running ads. Yeah, Could you speak so, to how you run your business not yeah, doing that? Yeah. So we, we run our business. I hate to say it, but like correctly, not, not that people need to advertise that yeah. don't run it correctly, but I learned from early on that if you follow up with clients needs and you fully fulfill their needs, you completely satisfy that customer then they're going to, recommend you and it's going to be returned tenfold. And I believe now that I've been in business, of course, for 18 years, um, it's something that comes natural is the, um, referral base. Yep. For sure. And, and I'm comfortable with the size that I'm at. Yes. So there's some people that want to be nationwide. There's some people that want to be statewide. Um, I've reduced over the years, my distance of, of doing jobs, I don't go on the South side anymore for any more grass yeah. cutting and things like that. I'm mainly on the peninsula and into Williamsburg. We still do some stuff on the South side, but, um, I've just become comfortable in business and I've realized that I have more leads than I, I need. Yeah. And, 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 and to be honest, I, I don't even fulfill the, I could easily just go through my customer base and just call them and say, Hey, how you doing? And unfortunately, right. like I just don't. I mean, that's one thing that I kind of wish I did better. Sure. But just the everyday being so busy and I'm just comfortable. But they feel, but the thing is though, you're comfortable. And I think people will take comfort as two different things. Like there's comfortable and there's settling. Yeah. There's comfort and then there's, there's complacent. Yeah, there you go. See, he's got better words. He's smart. I told you. So <laughs> you did. Um, but that that's such a key thing because you I'm have still, yeah, I'm still grinding. You have clarity on who you are, who your business's identity is. And for like like honestly, 
the stuff I'm talking about in the in the episode that dropped today mm-hmm. that's live um, has everything to do with the comment that you just made. Like you have complete clarity and you have a vision for where you want to be. You're not chasing what other businesses in your industry are doing. You know, you 18 years in, you've been through so many different things, yeah. different seasons of the business. You know, the things you like to do, you know, the things you don't, you know, the things that you do well, you know, the things that you don't, you know, from a leadership standpoint, where your limitations are, where you excel, you know what you want your days to look like. And that doesn't mean every day looks that way. Mm -hmm. But if most do, that's a great place to be. That's a great place to be. And there isn't this pressure for unnecessary growth. Mm -hmm. And here's the, the reality though, too. If staffing was different, you could take on more of the leads that you aren't able to do. Cause even though you got all these referrals, 100%. which is so key, you're not, even if everybody, one of those referrals wants to work with you, cause it was just a bomb ass referral. You're not going to be able to accommodate whatever timeline line they may have for themselves. So they're going to go elsewhere and you're comfortable with that. And, and this is all industry specific. Sure. I mean, there's, there's plenty of businesses like your own that can grow. Yep. And, and, and it's just the, facts of being a landscaper you know i met a guy maybe 10 years ago while i was buying some equipment and i was like why are you selling this equipment yeah he's like because i had about 125 employees i'm down to 25 now i'm making more money now and i have a lot less headaches yep i go hmm so it was was just really interesting to think about i mean especially in the landscaping industry you know I, i i've grown to 25 or 26 employees yeah and we're down to 12 to 15 and I'm a lot more happier now. Yeah. So it's just the niche that I've, you know, I'm comfortable. And people lose sight of that. Like I'm at half, you're at half the staff you were at, at your max. Yeah. And you're like, I'm way happier. This is just easy. And like, you don't have to get sucked into this growth thing. And the thing is you are growing, but you don't necessarily have to grow in the way that you thought that you did. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have, you should have gotten an email may not have heard yet, but Bay rivers were shutting down. So into this month, wow, we're shutting it down. And, um, the daycare piece, yeah, we're still yeah. gonna be doing boarding, um, and, and, and whatnot, but the daycare piece is going away. And for me, a huge part of it has to do with the staffing. Staffing is so incredibly difficult and I don't want to have this revolving door. It's impossible with that to provide the experience that I expect to provide. And at the end of the day, with all the success we've had, I mean, we're a year and a half old. We had one dog in April when we opened on the first day. Yep. And, you know, at our one year anniversary, we had 103 dogs mm-hmm. in little old Yorktown. Everybody is it's like, you're doing what? You're, you're shutting it down. Why are you shutting it? Clients love it. I got clients in tears I'm on the phone with them telling them like, yeah. you know, they're upset. And I get that. But for me, I'm shutting it down because I, I don't want to deal with the, the staffing frustrations. Um, there's a tremendous amount of liability with it. Yeah. You know, we've done it incredibly successfully. We've provided the experience that I want, but when I look at it in the grand scheme of our organization, the risk versus the reward, it just isn't there. Yeah. So 10, 15 years ago, I would have never made this decision. My ego would not have allowed it impossible it's but, tough tough to do but now i'm like yeah we're gonna be done we're just not gonna do it and we've invested a small amount of money into making that place yeah. be what it is but we're transitioning it into a training center we're still gonna be doing boarding boutique style small number like it's manageable i'm gonna be happier yeah and at the end of the day it, it's it, you know our organization is such a blessing the training business is so busy continues to grow we grow at the rate at which we can develop great trainers. That's our only limitation. And we still do ads and, but we're probably 50, 50 ads referrals. Yeah. And the reality is 10 years from now, I want that number. And I expect that number to be 90, 10, you know, 90% referrals, 10% advertising in my industry. Ads will always play a role, but I want that number to diminish. I don't want to have to spend, you know, $400,000 a year on advertising 10 years from now. If I am, why, why does my client base not support us enough? Right now, do you take, you make use of social media, you post stuff and, and things on there. Are you guys active on, um, 
Google? Do you do Google My Business and have that set up? I, I heard you talk about that, I believe, in another yeah. episode. Um, and I started looking into it. Um, I, I don't think I do. Okay. We got to talk about that. Yeah. You got to do that. Yeah. You got to do that. We'll, I, I can do it with you. It's super simple. Um, and the social media thing, I'm actually going to get right back into it because um, and I, I don't post as much as I, as I should because, you know, it really shows off our work and our yeah. capabilities. And um, I just picked up the new GoPro. And um, we've nice. been doing some time lapse video over the last couple of days. Nice, that's real um, nice. Yeah. You ever use a drone, Chris? Uh, <laughs> sore subjects. <laughs> Please so, tell so, him. Yeah, Please it, tell him. This is absolutely. <laughs> this sounded hey, like thanks. a loaded question. <laughs> it, it absolutely is. So, oh my god! Um, I wanted to get some shots of some landscaping, and of course, Josh, oh. just being the good guy he is, has <laughs> has the DJ DJI. Um, he's like, you can use mine. Go ahead. So I I, I borrowed his drone. Um, let's see. This one was, I was flying it around. I think I went out of town. Um, I was up in the Appalachian Mountains, saw a real scenic overview, took off the drone, lost it. <laughs> Couldn't see it anymore. I don't know. Wasn't it Afton Mountain? Weren't you at the... Somewhere over? up in there. <laughs> I was, I, I went looking for that because it was Josh's. I was through going through briars. I was all cut up. I was on a trail just... In, random people coming up like you all right man i was like yeah just looking for a drone down here in the woods because the gps on this thing says it's somewhere in this location all right it, it was getting dark i gave up i called josh i'm like josh yeah, wait was it is this the drone that's like did we get another one because i thought yeah, there was we've one gotten was a, one since this okay, is years okay. ago this is back i was with like the big say. drones so i'm like let me let me let me uh yeah this is the big ford <laughs> like, let me let me buy you a new drone bub. oh my he's god like, yeah, that's all right. Just keep everything in the package, the the nice case and everything. I'm like, cool. So I end up buying another drone, the same kind. And I don't know what I think sometimes. Um, <laughs> we're out on a sail, hey, sailboat on the York River. And I'm like, let's get some shots of my buddy's sailboat. Oh, yeah. Why not? Oh, there's one in the bottom of the water. Oh, shit. I didn't know about that. <laughs> So that's two drones. So we don't do drones anymore. No drones. We keep our hands on the no, camera. No drones. That's GoPro though. You're, look, you're on some Best Buy's watch list. That's right. They're like <laughs> just destroying hey, drones. Sell, sell them another one. Sell them another one. Send them emails know. with discounts. That's so funny. I'll never forget you calling me about that. And I remember being in the driveway of the house. And I'm like, bro, it's not a. It's fine. We're well, good. That, 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 well, so 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 because of that experience, like I'm borrowing a buddy's GoPro, and I'm like having so much fun with it. Yesterday, I went and bought my nice. own, and I called him. I'm like, yeah, so um, I'm just going to give you yours back before I, I lose it or, right. or break fair. it. So. The GoPro is tough, man. I'll tell you, did you get the the 9, yeah. the black 9 or whatever it's yep. called? So the whole thing's, like, built in. Like, you don't have to put any of the exterior cases on. That's what we have one of those, and that thing, we've usually upgraded every couple of years the GoPro, mm -hmm. and I got that one, and that is by far the best. I mean, short of these. Yeah. cameras which yeah. they're designed for different purposes that thing's incredible yeah i think it's gonna be great for us just being so just Love it. so rugged and we're in dust and yeah everything and i mean i get your sentiment everything in here borrowed according to me <laughs> purchased <laughs> by him but borrowed according to me i still i still get anxious i have to set everything up stuff. Don't trip over the tripod uh, yeah no gosh that's like that's always stress for me well he had the laptop was plugged in and guys, what you see, you know, on the cameras is, you know, Chris walks, he's like, oh, this seems a lot bigger on, on camera. It's like, yeah, because we're just shooting certain shots or whatever, but there's cables all over the place. I mean, it looks great. Jonathan's does an amazing job, but it's not perfect. It wasn't designed yeah. to be a studio. Uh, I was like, oh man, switch the, the laptop plug over on my side. I don't want Chris to have to step over that. I don't want him worrying about that. And so, you know how many times in a day I walk past my kid's height chair and I kick it like <laughs> just cause the legs are just, right. it doesn't seem like the legs should be that far out. No, and I'm they like probably walking shouldn't. past these tripods and I'm like, Oh, I have a history do here. Not, do not kick this. <laughs> do not kick this. <laughs> no, that's so funny though. But like, this is the type of thing though. Like Chris and I got story after story after story of ridiculousness and just from over the years and it, it it's just fun like i was just we were up in uh harrisonburg mm -hmm. maybe a month ago and we are coming back down oh we were at uh, my buddy matt got married up there and there were a bunch of us in the van we're coming back and we're coming down afton mountain and i just start busting out laughing and i tell that story yeah about it and they're like what i'm like there's a drone somewhere on the side of this mountain in the woods and my buddy looked for it he hunted for it yeah 
hunted for it. I write my name on and everything now. <laughs> Put a little phone number. Phone Ten number, years from now, every, there's going to be, everything. hey, we found this relic when we were fishing, and um, I don't think she's going to work anymore, but here's your drone. I, I don't know, but. <laughs> Where did you lose it? What? The 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 drone in the water? Uh, that York River. Oh, yeah. She's gone. Subs are freaking clipping that thing as it goes I have, through. I have no clue. What a mess. I should have jumped in, but it, the water was probably 40 degrees. Yeah, no, it wasn't worth it. Yeah. It's fine. You got a family you got to look out for, man. The drone, whatever. That yeah, thing's gone. Like I'm 24 years old. I'm diving right in that water after the <laughs> drone. <laughs> you, yeah, you can jump in after my stuff. You do what you want with your stuff. I don't, yep. I don't worry about it. So, Chris, t- give me, like, in all the hiring chaos of the mm. last 18 months, give me two, one or two, What's the most absurd thing that's happened in the last year and a half as far as like a new hire or an employee? Like you don't have to drop names or anything like that, but I know you've just dealt with some mess. So let's let's make everybody feel good that they're not alone in this. Yeah, and a, a lot of I, I think I got a lot of comments on this. Um, I definitely put one on Facebook and of course I scratched out the name of the employee and stuff. Um, potential employee. And this is what I was saying about you, Jonathan. I would have been earlier. I was like, I would have been just happy to see you come to work. You know, I don't <laughs> care if you leave halfway through the day, like just come to work. I don't know how many people told me that they were going to come to work this year and just didn't, just didn't show up. Um, I had one guy down on his luck Yeah, he lived probably five miles away or so. He, um, was riding his bike. I was like, you got reliable transportation. I, I need two things from you. Okay. I need a driver's license and reliable transportation. That says a lot about an individual. I'm sorry. That says that's a bottom line for me. Yeah. Um, And he had a bike and he told me his story. I was like, look, man, you're close. I'm going to give you a shot. He told me his life story and how he had some issues. And I'm like, cool. I I don't care about that stuff. I don't care about people's past. Right. I care about now. You got my trust until you lose it. Yep. Okay. Um, and I text him that morning again, and I'm like, hey, you coming in? He's like, yeah, I'll be there in a little bit. About an hour later, he's not there. Um, we've already started. I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, uh, I don't like the look of your shop. I go, what do you mean, man? He's like, I've just worked for people in the past. that have, like, kind of just junk everywhere, run down shop. Like, they just didn't treat me right. I'm like, okay, well, you know, you know, this is just a shop. Like this is where we store stuff. Like this right. is where like we got empty half pallets of pavers everywhere. We got right. equipment that breaks throughout the year that's being repaired. Like, like, okay, so what? Like I never thought of it actually. And and the funny thing about this is I take it as, you know, con- I, I went ahead and just did a bunch of work in my shop and cleaned it up. Yeah. Like I, I took that as a learning experience right and maybe maybe it isn't that attractive of a shop like and to me i don't I don't think anything of it right but you know i uh i i, I cleaned the place up i painted my building i <laughs> i mean off be, the guy who never showed up's yeah, text to be yeah. fair to you it's crazy to me because i've been in cer- circumstances where i'm down on my luck it's crazy how those who are in the lowest certain points of their lives, sometimes have the highest standards for what they will or will not do. Yeah. It's like, I thought you were struggling. Right. I, I was literally <laughs> trying to help this guy who was struggling. This dude flipped it and humbled and Chris. He probably <laughs> hit me lower. He hit me lower than anybody's ever hit me with that comment. I mean, my jaw hit the floor and I had to think about that one for a while. Yeah. And if you guys don't know Chris or haven't seen his company, like he takes pride in his stuff. His stuff looks good. His stuff is logo. His stuff stays clean. Yeah. Like his stuff is sharp. He's not running around like Bobo equipment. Like uh, but my it, shop, like the shop is the shop. Yeah. So what? But, it, but it's a lot nicer now. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's 110 degrees outside. We were, we were painting that thing and oh my gosh, you know, and, and I'm actually happier now that the shop's actually in better yeah. shape, but were you like, yo, bro, next time you ride by on your bike, let me know what you think? Oh, he, he begged and pleaded for that job after yeah, I kind of gave him. Happening. And, I, and I'm not rude in any way sure. when I respond to people that are like that. You know, I'm very just general, matter of fact. Yeah. Um, But, you know, he's like, okay, maybe you're right. Can I just start tomorrow, you know? And I'm like, nah, man. No. you've already you've already ruined it so, i was willing to give you a shot because may, maybe maybe there's a tire that's wore down too much for you one day and you're just gonna walk off my job right you know? like, yeah and the thing is like you were given a lot of consideration and opportunity yeah and that even even when you're down on your luck and you have nothing you can extend grace you can extend uh 
a professional conversation. You know, you, you're never lacking that. You never have to be lacking that. And so that's just, yeah, that's never going to get better. No, no, absolutely. You know, my, and you should probably know the same thing. You got guys who the first week they're late twice, you know, or they got something, they got to bounce out early because something's going on. And, you know, we're two weeks in and this has happened four or five times, man, mm -hmm. you got to make a change because that literally, no one's ever going to be better than they are in the first 30 days. So I, I got a, I got a, I got a really good right-hand guy of mine and he's always late. Always five, six minutes late. Oh. I'm like, look, man, come on. Like, let's do this. Like, set your alarm a little earlier. And uh, just late, 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 late. And I'm, I'm not going to fire him. Right. Because he's a pretty good asset. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, your, your start time 645 now. And then in my mind, his start time 7. So he gets there at 655. He's still late. Yep. I'm okay with it. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, if I if need you're going to you be here. even later than that, your, your start time's <laughs> going earlier. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so I just work with it. No, that's good. I mean, you got to make it work for you. Yeah. But but he adds enough value. Yeah. Where you're okay to be like, mm, and it's my all right. It's it's something small. It's not like he's drinking on the job. Or, right. You know, you know when we get so we do we train trainers every month. Yeah. All right. And so, you know, we have them come in. It's a 17 day program, and we start 8 a.m. here. 95% of the time, you know, we load up, we get in the van, we go get dogs. We start our day. Um, we have people come from all over the country, you mm -hmm. know, to train. And then we send them back to either Texas, Wisconsin, wherever. So when you're here, I bring you out here. I put you up in a hotel. We pay for your food. Like you're set. Yeah. When you're late getting here, when you literally have no reasonable distraction, and the hotel that I'm paying for is seven minutes away. And I know the tra traffic patterns. That's why I have you there. <laughs> like, ha, we're going to put you back on an airplane early <laughs> and, yeah. Send, yeah. and send you back. Because if you can't be timely here, and those, I surely yeah. can't count on you to be on time when you're in Des Moines. You know, and we're, and we're not giving you set times and things so, like that. That's, that's so true. Because it, it's not going to be better. Especially when you're going to meet with clients and stuff like that. We had a trainer years ago. I mean, she's just phenomenal. She's a phenomenal trainer. Great individual. She could not be on time to save her life. Yeah. And maybe four years ago, I ended up letting her go. And, um, you, you know, I was a Sunday morning. I was watching McKenna, my little niece. Mm -hmm. And we're watching, you know, Disney princesses or whatever was mm -hmm. going on. And I get a, a call and it's a client wearing me out. Rightly so. How am I supposed to be comfortable leaving my dog with you when you don't even prioritize being here for the drop off? And, yeah. All these things. Like, I get it. So mm -hmm. I rushed down there. I got tow McKenna in tow, all these things. It's a Sunday morning, trying to fix it. Trainer's not answering the phone. Trainer's not responding, all this stuff. Finally, trainer responds. Sorry, I overslept. Mm. I'm like, like got to go. Got to go. And it, that wasn't the first time that happened. But I allowed, you know, it to kind of be tolerated because of the value that was added. But then it just continually got worse. If it was always five minutes, whatever. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about it, you know. But but honestly, like, how many times have you been late? I mean, granted, there's some. How many? Let's put it this way: How many times have you overslept? Uh, do you oversleep? No, I really I don't. Yeah, neither do I. I I don't. I never once overslept and was late for my job. Yeah, I no, I've never done that in my life. No. I wouldn't say I have the healthiest sleep habits, um, but I've never overslept, um, you know, for that. If, if, if you have the mindset of that, you know, something is important. Yeah. It'll happen. You know, even like when you're like, when you travel, I always joke, Devin jokes about me with this, you know, I wake up every day between four 30 and 5. AM every day. Mm -hmm. I don't set alarms, nothing. If I have something very um, important that is scheduled that I cannot miss, I will set an alarm. For 6 a.m. Yeah. Like that's the only alarm I have. If we're traveling and something needs to happen earlier than that, I'll set an alarm. Let's say it's 3 30 in the morning, whatever it is. I will be awake 10 to 15 minutes before that alarm goes off. Yeah. Automatic. Like I just wake up. I just on it. And I just I I don't know why, but it's been that way since I was a kid. But I'm just not. And I don't think and it's not a, a matter of caring more. I think it's just, it's just a trait. It's just like, yeah, maybe that's it's a, it's it a character piece where it's like you value time, Jonathan, you know, his phone, I always joke because I'm like, man, this joker, like 
always calls me right back if he doesn't answer right away. And he he told me he goes, "This is Walking Dead dead ringtone." Yeah, like the, the theme song yeah. to the Walking yeah, Dead. He goes, "Yeah, it's serious." Time. I answer. I'm like, I didn't yeah. know that. I just thought I'm like, man, this guy's always on point. And stuff. He's like, no, I hear it. I know what the deal is. No, nah, but I'm like that too. I wake up every morning between three thirty five a.m. just every morning. I don't understand it. Even when I was working with the UVA football yeah. team, I would be at college, go out, party, and then have to be up at 5 a.m. for football practice. And I'm not even practicing. I'm the, yeah. just there filming it. But You're up and rolling. That's crazy early. Yeah. It is crazy early. I've tried to get better. I might stay in the bed, but I'm up. I've been working with my sleep. I've been trying to naturally wake up rather than wait for my alarm yeah. to go off. But I do wake up by alarm. Yeah, it's very rare. I just don't like what it does to me. Yeah. Like I, it, the the alarm, like just bothers me. Now, well, there's that, a lot that's, of stuff. that's where you naturally waking up always right. puts you in a better state for the day in the morning. Typically, I wake up to a 130 pound Rottweiler face, like sitting on the side of the bed, resting his head, like looking at me dead in the eye. And I was like, ah, this ain't how I want to wake up either. You know, Rocky, you got to go chill, got to relax. But then, like the kids now, like Logan and Kiki, they're up at 5 a.m. Right. You know, because they got to get to to school. They leave the house six forty five, and so they're up. They're doing their little things, and that kind of wakes the house up if if not everybody else is is rolling. So look, Chris, you got a little bag over there. Yeah, you want that? what's going on there? Oh, I was talking that's about one. your bag. Oh, I didn't well, know you were gonna give. You. Yeah, you're gonna give me a bag. Swag bag. Swag bag. Look at this, guys. You gotta be careful. This is the you gotta be careful with this. Yeah. So, um, careful. There's a there's a little bit of a story behind this. So okay, hit us with it. Back in the day, yeah, um, we used to sit around and play some poker. We did drink a little drinks. Yep, I think we passed around a bottle of Dom. Uh huh. It's careless. A time or two. Straight foolishness. Foolishness. I actually went out trying to find some Dom. Oh my back. god, you're ridiculous, <laughs> dude. Well, there's a shortage. If anybody doesn't know, I didn't a, know there was a, a shortage on Dom. Shortage of Dom right now for like the past year. So I'm like, what's the next best thing? My brother is a huge connoisseur of bourbons. Nice. Has a massive collection of oh bourbons. Gosh. All right. I called him, said, what do you think would be a good bottle? I don't know how much bourbon you drink, but I'm sure the audience might know what this is. I yeah, drink Make a, sure you hold it up to the camera. I drink a decent amount. Okay, this is fire. Thank you, Chris. Swag hat. Appreciate it. Swag hat. Digging that. Got you a shirt too in there. Oh, nice. Now we can That's, represent it. Yeah. Good. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Are you kidding me right now? Josh Fowler, who's been on the podcast, he is a massive bourbon nerd. Holy moly. Let me get this open. Okay. And it's logoed. <laughs> 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 this is awesome. This is great. Uh, Pro landscapes, they don't play. That's not that's not something that'll sit on your shelf for a while. That's so I awesome. Just, I just want you to think about me every time you drink. Man, I will every single time. This is so awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, we used to play cards, come over to the house. We would just be reckless. And um it was always a good time. It yeah, was always great. Thank you, Chris. Gonna... That's awesome. Man, look, I can't tell you how much um I appreciate you. I yeah. can't tell you how much um you your family means to devin and i um you just i i mean it when i say it you know you're one of the most solid incredible human beings i've ever known in my life like Thank you. i mean that that's not Thank just you. words um you and i told you this before but i want the world to hear it again like i was very 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 broken and lost and you treated me no different from when we were playing cards, drinking Dom to where I'm like, can I borrow your truck? Like you treated me the same and yeah. you loved me the same and you invested in me the same. And man, that just like, I am your dude for life. Like there's nothing you ever have a need for that. I will not take care of for you. I and that. you know, I just, I, I wish you continued success in your business with your beautiful family. And, um, this is dope. This is going in the office and um, start rocking this gear. Yeah. You good? You have fun? Yeah. It was, it was a good time. It was, right. It's always good talking to you. I mean, right. I could just do this over some bourbon anytime. Well, we'll have to arrange that for sure. I was like, let's do a Saturday show and let's just <laughs> sit here and 
put a three hour show together. Season the next next episode um, that we do with with Chris, we'll get into it, and that's what we will do. Yeah. We'll do a Saturday morning. We'll have games on in the background, and um, we'll have some beverages. Put games on up on the yeah, TV. Yeah, we can do that, or we'll yeah. set up a mini studio over in the office and get it going. We'll do something fun. We're gonna have Chris back. He's got <laughs> we got stories to tell. I can get that. And done. this guy, honestly, you do need to be following him on Facebook um, and Instagram. Drop the. Uh, I know you said Facebook. What about Instagram? Where, th- where can they follow you? Uh, I think it's Pro Landscapes by Chris Moore okay. as well. Perfect. Um, well, I'll give you all the information so you can put Good. in your link and everything. If you're a service-based business, particularly, and you know you got questions, you know you're starting out and it's early, you're trying to take your business to the next level. Hit Chris up. Like this yeah. dude's got so much knowledge, and he's been he's been a part of every step of his business. There's there's not a, a moment where he's disconnected. Um, you know, it's there's a strategy to it. There's so much wisdom behind it. And, you know, feel free to reach out to him and, and ask those questions. We're going to have him back on for yeah, another show. I mean, I appreciate that because I, I, I do like helping people. I, I really do. And and there's been some businesses in the past that have called me with questions and I have great relationships with, to them, with them to this yeah. day because of what I've, what I've given them. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, if anybody wants any information, please reach well, out. Well, you're in this game long enough. I don't care what the industry is, man. At, at some point, you've you got to give back because it, it's not easy. And the ones who make it this far, you know, you're, you're running up on four times the average of a business surviving. I mean, that's not by accident. And that speaks volumes to you and the type of business that you run. And the fact guys, if you're paying attention, he doesn't have to run ads yeah. and he's, and he does very, very well, very plenty, successful, plenty of work out and there. plenty of work. So, you know, hit him up. If you got questions, Jonathan, that's it, baby.